Fourth of July like today. It's just crazy talk. I tell you. We are live, it looks like. Yes, we are. Cool. <clears throat> and let's go to Facebook. Back to the future. <coughs> what? As you can see me up my orange shirt. <laughs> yep, ready to go hunting, I presume. Yeah. And my page. That. Okay. All right, socials are done. Got our notes. And Backup number one recording. Yes, it is. Oh, let me close parallels so it doesn't pick up all the memory. <laughs> Good call. And audio hijack. Notes. Oh, come on. There's a new update, the audio hijack. Oh, Do yeah. The, this morning, or this, yeah, well, this afternoon when I did the big show, yeah. Uh, OBS and Audio Hijack had updates. <laughs> I'm like, Seriously, I'm supposed to start a show now. I don't have time wait. for updates. It can wait till later. Okay. Recording on Audio Hijack. We are ready to go. Awesome. Episode 157. And five, four, three, two. Welcome to episode 157 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg. My co-host, Warren Sklar, is off this week, but we got Jeff Gamut back on the show. Welcome back, Jeff. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing well. And uh, and filling in for Warren, those are some pretty big shoes to fill, or at least I assume yeah. they are. I've actually never seen Warren's feet. No, I haven't either. So you're not alone. <laughs> So well, we'll just go uh, with big shoes to fill. They're, they're, they're big shoes. Uh, but uh, Warren's enjoying his 4th of July Independence Day holiday mighty early. So I hope you're having fun, Warren. We, we will miss you. And uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Uh, some more beta releases came out, some new stories. And uh, I thought we would talk a little bit about shortcuts. And so, Jeff, you just talked about that with Brian Chaffin on the Apple Content Machine with the Mac Observer. So why not mm -hmm. uh, kind of extend that a little bit here at the, this audience? Um, and uh, uh, we'll just come some more surprises coming up here. So let's um, let's jump into the news. We only have a couple stories this week. It's kind of a, a light news week. Um, my uh, Mac rumors: uh, the iPhone 12 passed 100 million in sales in the first super cycle since the iPhone 6. The iPhone 12 lineup passed 100 million units in April, meaning that the, the, the devices achieved the landmark figure within seven months of its launch. By comparison, this is two months earlier than the iPhone 11. That launched in 2019, and almost the same as the iPhone 6, which powered a sales volume super cycle. That was around the 4G transition in 2014, 2015. Uh, this means that the iPhone 12 series is the first volume super cycle iPhone in six generations. Um, and, wow. uh, and so 
Yeah, it's it's a pretty impressive to see that the iPhone 12 has has been as success, as successful as it has, especially everybody saying it's doomed, and of course the iPhone 12 Mini is doomed, and so they obviously are selling enough phones, don't you think? I, I think Apple is doing pretty well with the iPhone in general, and the iPhone 12 line is just fine. Yeah, and. We hear Apple is doomed, I think, pretty much every iPhone si- uh, release cycle no. because you just can't make everyone happy. No. And and the people that tend to say, well, uh, Apple really blew it this time. The iPhone is now dead. Uh, this is going to ruin the company. They're the people that are going to complain regardless. And... Uh, and you know, and in some cases, they're just the people that that uh, don't like Apple. They enjoy Apple bashing, and uh, and there you go. Uh, but the, this super cycle doesn't surprise me, really, not at all. The, this was a major refresh for the iPhone line. So was. of course, this is the the year that or the cycle that we're going to see uh, a big boost in sales. No, yeah, I, 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 I think it'll continue. It'll continue to, to be boosted in sales. Um, I love my 12 Pro Max. Did you? Did you? I forgot. You did go with the 12 Pro, right? I, I went with the 12 Pro. Yeah. The, I mean, the 12 Pro Max. The features, the extra features, are very compelling, but the size, size. is not. It's it's just too big for me. I mean, the the 12 yeah. Pro size, the oh. the the 10. I mean, that was it too was comparable. Big. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt like those. I, had the big. I thought it was, I, I thought it had a compromise because I went from a eight plus to the ten when the ten came out. So I, I uh, can see why you would say that, but yeah. I've never been a, a plus phone size person, uh-huh. and uh, and if I can't do everything with one hand, just the phone solidly in one hand. Well, yeah, with my then, giant hands, I think I can handle it okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe I need to get my fingers stretched. I don't know. <laughs> I got those giant hands, so. Uh, but uh, no, it's good. Good to hear. I, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm not surprised. I mean, let's face it. It's fifty percent of Apple's business is is the iPhone. So I don't think uh, Apple's going to let up uh, anytime soon, and we'll obviously be talking about new iPhones. You know, if if it goes from twelve, it's going to go to lucky thirteen unless they decide to skip it because they did skip a number. They skipped to, when it went to eight. They went went, went right to ten. So. I wonder if they'll do the same thing uh, because well, that's right. 13 get the iPhone nine. No, I went from the 10, from the eight to the 10. So I'd be curious to see if uh, they're already rumoring saying it's a 13, but maybe they will keep it. But, but you know, and who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, and then uh, my favorite uh, cellular network, this was on the Mac Observer. Our friend Andrew Orr wrote this. Uh, T-Mobile is going to allow you to try out their network for free using an eSIM. Uh, T-Mobile is offering iPhone users a new way to test drive its network uh, by downloading an app and installing it with, that installs an eSIM uh, uh, through the network test drive app on, I, on iOS. You can test the T-Mobile network for free for 30 days with 30 gigs of bytes of the LTE data, whichever comes first. And you won't leave your current carrier and you won't lose your existing phone number. So during the trial period, you'll be provided with a temporary phone number that you can use voluntarily for calls and texts by default. Your primary number will be your existing network provider and will be used for calls and texts because we know you got an eSIM and you got a physical SIM. You got two lines on your phone. Right. Uh, once, once the trial expires, you will be able to keep the temporary number uh, that you were assigned. Uh, you will not be able to keep the, te- excuse me, the temporary number uh, we were assigned. And at the end of the trial, you'll uh, be able your current provider will remain active and on your device and the deactivated eSIM profile can be safely removed. Um, I have my iPhone uh, through T-Mobile and I, I, I also transferred it to the eSIM because I like the fact that I can take a, a regular SIM from another carrier and be able to have two separate lines. Now T-Mobile did give me two free lines I have on my account. So, uh, and so I have them on in different. So I have one in this iPhone 10 R that I'm that I'm used sporting with the the camera here, and then uh, I had it in an old Android phone too. So, so hey, when you when when you, they're going to give you two free lines and it does cost you a dime, you know, you, you take advantage of that. But this is great, right. and, and I 
I've been a very, very happy T-Mobile customer, but two, almost three years now. And so ever since I abandoned that AT&T dreaded network. Um, so I, I think it's great. I, I, I wish other carriers would do this. I I agree. But uh, this is very much T-Mobile. That I mean, that's totally their style. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see AT&T or Verizon yeah. following suit. Um, Never. I, I was a T-Mobile subscriber all the way up until... Uh, uh, the first iPhone came out and then mm. you had to go to, to right. AT&T. And matter of fact, when I switched over to, uh, to the iPhone, my, my SIM card for my, my T-Mobile phone was old enough that it's when I boot up my phone, it still said V stream for, for voice stream because oh my gosh, th- yeah, that that's, that's how long I'd been a customer. It um, back ways. It does. Yeah. I I'm still on AT&T and, uh, Around yeah. here, it's it's all about which carrier gives you the service where you need it. Right. And uh, um, f- for right around my part of Boulder, I'm better off with AT and T. I have friends that live several blocks away; they're better off with Verizon. And yeah. go the other direction; it's T-Mobile. Um, but I'm going to try this out because uh, I think it'll be yeah. really cool. And you can test it out, see if, if the network's improved since uh, you've been on last. Right. Now, am, am I correct uh, in, in remembering that the iPhone XS is the first model that included yes. eSIM support? Yep. I believe that's what it said in uh, uh, in the article. Yeah, it says the iPhone XS or newer with eSIM capabilities. Yeah, I do remember when the XS added that because I, I have owned every iPhone since... <laughs> as far as I can remember, since I am in the trading program and I do uh, get the new model each year. So, mm-hmm. uh, so the, t- the 10S actually is now in the, in the capable hands of my, my sister-in-law. She's, she bought awesome. that phone for me many years ago. So that's two phones ago. <laughs> so I'm on the 12, had the 11 last year. Right. Um, right. So, uh, yes, yeah, so it, it, that's still a very capable phone, the 10S. So, oh yeah, it's a great phone. Yeah. So yeah, check it out. I, I think that that's a great, great way to test test out T-Mobile. See see what uh, if it works for you, and if it does, I'm, I'm one happy customer. Yeah. In the Chicago area, I don't have any problems. Uh, T-Mobile's got really good coverage. So when I visit when I visit uh, Las Vegas, I've been out of Vegas uh, the end of this month on a trip here. Uh, coming up, uh, I've always had good coverage there. And uh, any other places I've, I, other than like rural areas, like if I travel to Michigan or some places that are more rural, I mean, you're going to expect not to have very good coverage. Um, in those, yeah, those I think Verizon is better in rural areas. Yeah. So the team was getting there. I mean, the five, they're building up the 5G and then, um, but uh, it, it, it all depends on which, or what you want to, want to use. And you can always uh, look at the secondary carriers like Mint Mobile and uh, um, uh, even Google Fi, who, who, who uses uh, a split between T-Mobile and US Cellular. Um, there are some other carriers you could take a look at as well. But uh, yeah, Mint is always a big podcast supporter. And uh, that I, I tried their service and it was, it was pretty decent. And then it's very cheap. So, but I, I'm a happy T-Mobile customer. I'm not, I'm not leaving anytime soon. Awesome. So uh, next story here, uh, Apple releases Apple Watch International Collection bands and faces. Um, so with the Olympics approaching uh, uh, soon here, as we record this, uh, Apple released a new collection of Apple Watch sports loop bands to let people share their support of their country. There's also matching downloadable watch faces. Uh, there's 22 countries that are participating in this and going from Australia, Belgium, Canada, all the way down to the U.S. The U.S. will also have that too. So maybe we should buy some U.S. watch bands. I don't know if I want to have a red, white, and blue uh, uh, watch band. but uh, yeah, It depends uh, on where you are, whether or not we should be wearing red, white, and blue publicly. <laughs> some, right. some places don't like us. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I wear Canada. It's red. Uh, you could say it's French. Yeah. It, you yeah. Know, yeah, just... I, I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the, 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 uh, the, it's, it's, um, it's blue and white as the main part. And then it's got red on, on the edges of the band. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a sports Oh, I'm look. looking at it now. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's actually, that, that looks a lot better than what I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like an actual flag, red, white, and blue color. Um, it might be something fun. And, uh, but I, I'm so in love with the, this, this loop, uh, the, the, the continuous loop band that, that uh, I just 
I, I don't ever change this band. I love it so much. <laughs> it's just so comfortable um, that uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if I would, I would, I mean, I've got the other, the other sport loop bands and they're nice. I that's the ones I, I was wearing, but not since I got this, the, this, uh, the loop, it's, it's been pretty awesome. So, right, but check it out and you can have your matching face to, to, to with it as well. I like the Japan band. Yeah. It's nice. White with uh, red pinstripes on the edges. There you go. Yeah. And then um, finally, I don't usually um, connect. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> I don't usually um, connect uh, uh, a story to New York Post, but this is all I could find here. This is uh, Apple quietly buys Roku remote button for its, they say, its struggling Apple TV app. Uh, Apple TV is scrambling for new subscribers and quietly looking for unlikely rival for help. Apple's struggling streaming service, which started in November 2019, has bought a button on the on the on the Roku remote, a surprise tie up with the per- popular streaming stick maker uh, that Apple hopes will expand its customer base. Well, I'm not going to read more of the proper propaganda here in New York Post, but That's, um, wow, I, I, I wonder how they feel about Apple and Apple TV plus. I'm I'm just having a hard time picking up their sentiment here. Exactly. Um, that's okay. First, we don't know how many subscribers Apple has on Apple TV Plus because they're not telling us. And yeah. uh, and as far as I know, there's no indication Apple is scrambling to to get new subscribers. And um, okay, the whole way they're presenting this. What what a crappy way to write this article. I know it was um, a propaganda. I, I, I was I was really tempted. I was so, really like kind of reserved. I wasn't even going to share this article, but I, I thought it was. And we we actually talked about this on Mac to the Future Go with the uh, guy and Warren yesterday. Uh, but I, I thought if anything, we we, we could we could have a debate here of the, the fact that uh, Roku is a big platform. I mean, and you could buy this device with this remote for twenty nine dollars. Let's face it that that is a pretty gosh darn good deal compared to spending you know 149 dollars for a t for an apple tv um uh but what what's wrong with apple you know jumping on the bandwagon i mean i've got i've got this old uh roku button uh, remote here i'm showing on the camera here that has hulu netflix disney plus and sling i don't use sling so that that button's that button for me is pointless um so uh so it's it's there and it makes it uh it makes it easier to access it, which is which is just not a bad not a bad thing. You know, to me, the 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 interesting news out of this isn't that Apple has done this because this totally makes sense, and this is just what you do. I mean, there, you want your Netflix button, you want your Amazon Prime button, you want your Hulu button, you want your Apple TV right. Plus button. That's it. That's that's right, what right. should be on these, and the. The big question for me isn't why did Apple do this? Oh my gosh. It's why did they take so long to do this? Right. And I'm wondering if it's more a thing about, uh, about co- contractual obligations that Roku had with uh, button placement Maybe. and they had to wait for something to expire for Apple to take over the spot. Well, I, I I have many of the uh, of the different types of, of TV devices. I have a Roku. I have a TiVo stream. Call me crazy. Why do I have that? I got it as a Christmas present. I thought, hey, nice nice stocking stuffer. It only costs forty bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's Google TV. So I, I you know I like to experience the platforms and see what what everybody else is doing. You know, Amazon TV. You know, uh, the, uh, the the Fire Stick or the Fire TV. Um, mm-hmm. I had one of the old Fire TVs that you know the, the thin base one. I actually have a, a Fire TV Cube that was down in in my uh, in my uh, home theater area and um um and that's even decent too so i mean I, but then amazon turns around and reciprocates you know they, they have their services on on all those devices i just mentioned of course and so does apple tv i mean uh apple tv is on the google is on the google tv um apple tv is also on um uh, uh with all, all the samsung other devices. tvs samsung yeah you get smart tvs yeah. i mean they're, they got to get their name out there but apple continues to buy more more and more different content there's more great more great uh more more great series coming um 
can't wait for Ted Lasso in about, uh, we're counting it down, 22 days, I think it is. Yeah, 20, oh, yeah. As we record this, 22 days, yes. I can't wait. I was going back and binge watching the, the series again. I was like, God, this show is so good. Um, I, I, that's when I went all the way up to episode five or six. And I was like, I want to watch the rest of them again. It just, it's just, when it, when it was on the first season, I just, I couldn't wait to see the next, the next, uh, uh, the next episode. Cause of course they make you, they make you wait, uh, but which, which is yeah. fine. No, it's not. <laughs> it is not fine. Damn you. Damn you. <laughs> we have, we have moved beyond traditional, uh, terrestrial, uh, big three network. Um, True. Uh, TV scheduling and Netflix made that very clear. Right, when they, and, they do it. Right. And, uh, and now having uh, the different uh, streaming services start to go back to the once a week thing. Yeah. It's to me, it's horribly frustrating. And I stop watching shows because of it. So just wait till they all are, are all in the catalog and then you just go binge watch at once. Yeah. I mean, I I'm watching, loki every week which by the way is an amazingly great series i gotta go i gotta start watching it i got a disney plus yeah but the but i have no idea what day it's on the only reason i uh i i watch each episode each week is because it's on some day during the week yeah uh I, i start seeing tweets about the episode and so i'm like oh i should go watch that before i see spoilers yeah spoilers yeah yeah um, okay, I'm looking at at uh, the uh, farther down in this article, and uh, holy crap, they they quote um, Light Shed Partners analyst Rich Greenfield, who called no. uh, Apple's move to uh, put uh, or get a get a button on the Roku <laughs> remote shocking, and Why says nobody shocking? would ever have expected this. What? Okay, Rich Greenfield may be uh, very well informed and very competent, but in the in this instance, I mean, and I, I literally have no idea who he is. But uh, in this instance, <laughs> I was going to say, stri- who is he? <laughs> I don't know, but he's straight up wrong. Nobody ever would oh, have yeah. expected this. No, everyone in the industry, all the analysts, all the pundits, th- everyone had to have been expecting this. I mean, I, I'm not even a, an Apple journalist anymore. And I've been expecting this. It, it, there, there is no surprise here. No, none. I mean, uh, the, the Verge reported on this in back in April of 2021, uh, and and then that didn't get much fan for. But I, I mean, it was funny because I wanted, to, I was searching for this article to find out, find if anybody else would was even talking about, it, and they're all quoting back to this article in the New York Post of all of all places. Uh, but so they, they're going through analysts uh, estimated streaming service and uh, they've surpassed 40 million by the end of 2020. And of course, comparing Netflix to 208 million. Um, I mean, of course, Netflix is bigger because Apple is still, still working on it. And, and yeah, we're both Apple fanboys. let's face it. But I, I still think, yeah, but, but I'm happy to call Apple out when, when appropriate, yeah. I'm not, I'm yeah, not a absolutely. blind follower. Absolutely. Yeah. If there's something they're not doing where you and I are both are going to call out the fact that, uh, uh, and yeah, even the heat, like, I'm, I'm seeing here that, that you did say here, but there, there's confusion in the marketplace. What, what confusion is there now? Granted, Apple is going to stop offering the free 12 months that they did when it first came out, um, at the end of this month, as we record this, uh, end of July. Uh, and you know, that's great. I mean, it's, it's time and they, they need to get people to really be on board. I mean, it's $5 a month. That's so reasonably priced. I mean, think about how much, what you're paying for, for Netflix. I mean, granted, I get Netflix for almost free because T-Mobile gives us a little perk, but, uh, but that's how I get HBO max. Yeah, exactly. I get HBO Max because it's included in my cable subscription. So I mean, so the, the the streaming services are just so it just keeps it just keeps evolving. It just it's you know uh, Discover, Discovery Plus. I've been paying for that. Haven't watched it much, but it's it, it's actually a, I, I kind of like it. It's got a lot of great stuff on it. I mean, you you got to go back and watch all the diners, drive-ins, and dives episodes because there's like twenty three years worth of them. But <laughs> uh, 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 but uh, I. I, I just I just don't understand why this is such a big deal. I mean, let's I guess that let's face it, Roku is going to be the more popular of the devices because it's so cheap. I mean, this device that's on now, the Express 4K, it says in this article it's thirty nine ninety nine. Go to Amazon right now; it's twenty nine ninety nine, and it's a four K device. 
So, I mean, how do you beat that? And as far as price goes, I mean, yeah, granted yeah. the Apple TV does have a nice interface and, and we like, and, and, and I like it. Um, but that, that's the reason why I have so many of these different devices so I can play and just kind of get the, you know, get that immersive experience sure. of what people ex- experience. You could do that. So I've got three devices that are probably the total of one Apple TV. So, so really think about that and Hey, what the heck it's, it's, it's I mean, yeah, granted I have a, 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 a three and four uh, port uh, switch uh, HDMI uh, switch from IO gear. I just go do, 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 do switch between the four of them mm-hmm. on one, on one source, but um, why not? It's, 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 it's a, it, it is a, it's a cool thing. And you now whatever New York post, I think that was just a kind of a silly article, honestly. Uh, but yeah, I, I've, I've been scanning through more of it and, uh, and it's surprising uh, what I'm finding in there that that's just patently wrong. Yeah, they're, they're, that's what I say. You got you got a, a news outlet that's covering technology that has no business doing it. Yeah, honestly, I mean, the part they got right <laughs> is that Apple has uh, uh, gotten a, a deal with Roku to put an Apple TV Plus button on their remote. Exactly. So there you go. Oh well. Well, we beat that one to Beth. So let's uh, move on to topics this week. And uh, we can't we can't make fun of Warren this week because he continues to tell people to go out, run, install we beta. We can make fun of him. He's we just not here him. to defend He's himself. He's not here to defend himself because he kept saying it yesterday on Back to the Future. I, I, and I kept saying, no, you don't tell people to go out and install beta. You just don't. It's, okay, here's what I tell people. If you yeah. want to install the beta, that's great. Uh, for for whichever device, but don't put it on a mission critical device. If you only have exactly. one iPhone, you don't run beta on it. Um, no. If you only have one Mac and you want to run beta there, get an external SSD, install right. the beta on that. And uh, and unless you can afford to brick an Apple Watch, never run beta on Apple Watch. Exactly, exactly. So uh, this week, uh, as we record this, they released this the. It was interesting the way they released this in iOS 15 and iOS and iPad OS 15. It was the second beta, but it was like a revised version. Because I just Didn't they do that this, last year, and maybe they the did first public I, beta. Uh, maybe they did because this the, the second beta came out, and now there's a revised version of the second beta, um, and it was released to, to developers for testing purposes and. Uh, with the new software coming just a week after it was only a week after, so uh, they must have found some bugs. And of course, a lot of times of they course don't tell they you did. it's beta. That's the whole point. It's beta. Hey, it happened to me. I was on the show yesterday and my camera kept going out in camo because, you know, that phone is running beta. So I served me right. There, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I'm I running iOS beta. I yeah, I, I'm running iOS beta on, uh, on a 10 inch iPad Pro and yeah. uh, iPad Mini 4. Neither are mission critical devices. Same here. There I you got go. First gen iPad Pro 12.9 inch that I, I'm running it on. And then I have the 10R that I'm running it on. Those are my two beta devices. I never put it on my primary. Never, 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 never. Same. Never, never, never. But nor or I'll say, go, go, run, do it now. Well, <laughs> in Warren's defense, it's not his device. They're installing it no, on. Not exactly. It's still, it's working solid. You live on the edge. So well, this is a little over the edge and, uh, and <laughs> yeah. working solid in beta isn't the same thing as, uh, no. as an no. official release being solid. There's stuff that does not work. There are features that are missing. Yeah. Stuff's broken. Absolutely. So then, uh, and then, and then that exact same day, uh, the couple that was, uh, I was actually yesterday as we record this, uh, uh, the public betas have now been released. So now, now we're in big trouble. You're going to get these people that want to get out there and well, I want to test it because I don't have a developer account. Now I can, because it's public beta. Uh, and you could ta- you can download and test the new updates. Um, if you've signed up for the beta testing program, which is can be easily done by going to the public uh, um, the public uh, beta site, uh, yeah, you can sign up and all the proper certificates and all that stuff. And of course, you'll be able to try all the new features we've talked about with FaceTime and Focus and the Safari redesign and uh, all kinds of other stuff. So yeah, you could do it, but buyer beware! Don't don't yeah. don't be diving in. Part of the problem that we that we have here. I, I put in Google's lap because Google yeah. has been giving people software for over 10 years that they, that they have tagged as beta mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and it's, 
you know, it's public release, like, like production software, but it's still tagged beta. And so people have come to expect that beta just means I'm getting it faster and they expect it to be final release quality. And uh, yeah, and that's a problem. Yeah, no, cra- crazy stuff. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, now the um, other side of that, I think right. Siri should still have the beta badge on it. Yeah, <laughs> it's still, it's still, I mean, uh, you know, one of the biggest things that drives me nuts is when I, when I'm, I'm typing a text and I go type it and then and every time I, every time I type it and then, and then I hit the darn mic at the bottom right on the keyboard. I do it all the time. I, I hit and, like one of the emoji buttons yeah. or. No, I or, hit the mic. Then I'm talking the and, then, and it picks up. I have to race it. <laughs> it, it, it. It drives me crazy. I, 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 there's got to be a way and, to stop And now that. you're texting people, son of a frick of frick frick, frick, Apple frick, frick, Safari. Frick. Just got data. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Um, the one good thing about going iOS 15, if you decide you want to go back, there is a way to do it, but you have to know how to. So if you're not, and you tech, can't tech, with an Apple Watch, and I was just going to get to that. The, the, oh, they did first. Sorry see, to take that. No, 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 no. That I was going to say, yeah, don't even do it with the Apple Watch because if you if you do it, there's no way, no going back. And and if you go back to iOS 14, you're going to be in trouble because I don't even know if it's going to work uh, with with Watch OS 8 that's out there. And then we have that article here as well they seeded the first uh, release you have to be on on uh public or dev beta yep if you're going to do the apple watch beta yeah period so, so there's no going back they, uh, the biggest thing they didn't add is the find my app is now available on the apple watch uh, to uh, helping locate lost items uh, right from the device uh from your wrist as opposed to get pulling out your iphone which is cool that's uh, very cool can, I can wait. <laughs> I'm not putting it on my watch right now. Yeah, I, uh, I can wait. Uh, so meanwhile, Apple still has 14.7 out there as, a, as another beta. It's now the fourth version that just has come out. We're in beta four of iOS and iPadOS 14.7 that was just released a day prior to this um, and can be downloaded. Um, apparently, it's bug improvements, but apparently that there's enough bug improvements that they are they haven't released it out to everybody yet because it's uh, come on guys it's we're on fourteen six let's get fourteen seven out and move on I mean we're, you got to focus on fourteen fifth iOS fifteen at this point in my opinion. Am I the only person that when the news that the fourth beta of iOS fourteen point seven was out was surprised? Because I, yeah, seriously, I at this point, I thought we were already running iOS 14.7. I had to go and look at my iPhone just to no, make sure. It's 14.6. <laughs> so come on, Apple, release it. I, there, obviously, there's there must be some bugs that's in there that uh, that we aren't aware of that, of course, they never tell you about. Well, okay, so here here's a hypothesis. Maybe they've been holding it this long because they keep adding a new bug and security fixes. Because they're planning on this being the very last update for uh, iOS 14. Yeah. And so they, they just want to roll in as much as they can. Apparently. Well, the only the really the biggest standout feature that 14.7 is going to add is for the HomePod and the HomePod Mini. Uh, it's going to allow the Home app to set multiple timers on a HomePod or a HomePod Mini. Okay. Is that an exciting feature? I don't think so. <laughs> well, okay. Here's another thing. Because when you said HomePod, that reminded me, we're, we're going to get uh, Apple Hi-Fi, uh, Apple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's a blast wow. You mean the iPod Hi-Fi? <laughs> wow. We're, go- we're going to get high-res audio support for yeah. uh, uh, HomePod. And that's probably coming in the 14.7 update. And, uh, and if they're still working on that part, then they're going to hold everything until they've yeah. got that done. Absolutely. Well, and then meanwhile, you still have watch OS 7.6 is the fourth beta and you have TV OS 14.7 is out to developers as well. So Hopefully those will all be really soon and we can move on and focus on iOS 15 and tvOS 15 and watch, watch OS 15, please. So, all right. That's our fun with beta this week. And 
we talked a lot about beta even without warren here i know we did and and i'm i'm not as anywhere near as and a lot of times i don't spend enough time in beta because to, to, to start learning, learning the features and i end up having to catch up when it does come out so i think i got I need to change my my view here so uh we're celebrating a birthday this with this 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 past week uh the first iphone went on sale 14 years ago uh, on june 29th 2007 was the first iphone that went on sale it was unveiled in that, of course, famous presentation from by, by Steve Jobs in January of that year. And that summer, customers in the U.S. were finally able to get their hands on it. Um, it was, of course, like we just talked about earlier, it was exclusively to AT&T customers. And then famously, it had no 3G capability. I was smart. I did not buy the very first iPhone because I thought it was very expensive. I mean, it was like, it was at the time, I think it was $600 if I remember correctly. It was and more expensive was... than, uh, than the price tag. Yeah. Because you, you paid full price for the phone, but right. AT&T still charged you as if you were buying a subsidized phone. Right. So you bought the phone and then you continued to buy the phone you already owned, which was a really, really crappy move. on AT It was. Part. It was. So I did not have the very first iPhone, but I started the, the, the iPhone 3G and then 3GS and with the 4, the 4S, the 5, the 5S. I just kept going. I never stopped after that. So uh, so I've had every basically every iPhone other than the very first model. Um, I, but... I had that first model. I've had almost every single iPhone. Actually, the, with the 10, I skipped from 10 to 12 Pro. Right. And and I blame AT&T for that because uh, yeah. I, I was on their annual upgrade plan. And that was the year they're like, yeah, you can do the upgrade, but we're going to charge you an extra $500. And I'm like, my iPhone 10 is great. That's, I don't need that's why I, I stick with Apple's, uh, the Apple trading program. It works awesome. I mean, and I don't even feel it. I, mean, well, yeah. I switched with the 12 Pro and what I will yeah. do from, from this point yeah. forward, Yeah. no subsidized phones. I'm just buying the phone unlocked outright. Sure. That's it. S screw the whole. That's the thing. Program. But, but with the, with the Apple upgrade program, you already get the phone unlocked. So I could switch carriers to whenever I feel like it. Um, and, but I'm just obligated to pay the phone each month and it's locked in and it's not a pay through the citizens, uh, citizens, one bank, whatever they've been using for years. Um, so that's what I don't even feel it. I mean, it's, it just comes right out of my Apple card. I get my 3% and, and, and I'm, I'm on my merry way. So, yeah. uh, but it's all, it all, it all depends on what people want to do. It's understandable, but I think it's exciting. I, I mean, I'm so thrilled that I've been part of this and that's the whole reason why I started this podcast was just because of the passion I have for iPhone and iPhone is probably one of the most vital devices that are out there these days. Um, and the iPad is just a, is a, is a, a very close second, but, uh, yeah, it's, and I think you and I both will, will, will agree that, uh, they are very important in our lives. <laughs> Absolutely. So happy birthday. Happy uh, birthday. So let's uh, let's go into the uh, the big topic of this week. I wanted to touch on a little bit. Uh, you did uh, you did a, a great show with uh, with Brian Chaffin and uh, over at the Mac Observer with an Apple Content Machine uh, and talked about shortcuts. And you and I don't we don't talk enough about shortcuts. And we've we've had guests on here before that who are you know, quite the gurus of, of shortcuts. But uh, and I'm I've been trying all my might to try to dabble in shortcuts, and I need to do a better job of it. But but we've got you here this week to, to, to give us a little bit of what, what you've been uh, dabbling with in, in shortcuts. Uh, so let, let us know what uh, you've been, uh, what you've been playing with. Well, okay. Let me start by saying, and I, and I believe I said the same thing on Apple context machine. I decided it was really important for me to start doing more with shortcuts because it yeah. comes to Mac OS this fall. Yeah. And, uh, and so I also, I knew because of the keynote where they talked about automation on all of Apple's platforms, that this is the future of all automation across all of Apple's devices. Yeah. And so I needed to, to like really get back into doing more with this. So what I'm doing with shortcuts is, uh, is stuff that makes my day-to-day -day life easier. So I'm doing things like, uh, like setting up um, um, shortcuts that blend together different things that I'm doing with, uh, with HomeKit 
or with <laughs> with other apps or services that have shortcut support as well. Uh, for example, I'm doing things like um, uh, like creating shortcuts that mix together different scenes that I've created so mm-hmm. that I can have a single command that I use with, with the S lady to perform multiple things at once instead of having to say, hey, S lady, do this. Hey, S lady, do this. Hey, S lady, do this. I just say one thing and it all happens in succession. And, uh, and my favorite example of that is when I say, hey, S lady, I'm podcasting. It turns off the lights in my office and then turns the lights behind me blue turns off the lights in my hall except for one which is now red so if anyone comes into my place they know that I'm I'm either podcasting or recording and since I tend to play music all day long while while I'm doing stuff it then pauses whatever's playing on my home pods and uh, and to set that up as an automation in homekit it's I find it actually easier to create a shortcut, especially because I can give it that specific name that I want and whatever you name it, that becomes the Siri command. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and then there's so many great shortcuts out there that other people have made. Uh, Tons. Tons. Like one of my favorite is called Apple frames. And this one one. takes a, a screen, whatever screenshot you've taken of your phone your iPhone. And when you run the, um, the shortcut, it takes that screenshot and then it takes a template of, of an iPhone bezel and puts it all together and generates a ping for you and puts it into photos so that you've got it ready to use wherever you need to go. We got to get a short, short, uh, a, uh, a link to that so everybody could try it. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I will get the link for that one and, and give it to you. Um, and um, it's called Apple Frame. Uh, Apple Frames. Frames. Okay. Yeah. And another one that I set up so that I could use it as a widget is uh, is a shortcut that just turns on my Tunnel Bear VPN. Okay. And uh, and that also means that I can just say to my iPhone or iPad, "Hey, S Lady, turn on my VPN," and it'll just do it. That's, that's but awesome. it's a button for me now too. So I just tap the button and away you go. Um, and one thing I like to show people as a, as a starter shortcut is how to go in and, uh, and make a shortcut that launches an app. And then, uh, and then you can put whatever graphic you want as the icon for that. And then, uh, and then show it as, uh, as an icon on your home screen. And now you can customize mm-hmm how your app icons look. So you can put like family on there, your, your cat, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Also, any, any automations you've made in HomeKit, they show up in the automation uh, uh, section in shortcuts. So you have a single unified place where you can handle all of your HomeKit automations and all of your um, uh, just general shortcut automations, just all in one interface. That's awesome. It is. Um, uh, oh, here's one that I shared with Brian. And, uh, and I'm sure that he found it to be really cool. If, uh, be, and I say that because I told him, so therefore he must have found it cool. Um, you can set up a HomeKit automation in shortcuts that lets you pick a specific playlist that you have or a specific album that you have or one of Apple's curated playlists from Apple Music and uh, make that play on any combination of your HomePods that you have. And so I, I use that because if I say, hey, S Lady, play jazz, it always chooses one specific jazz curated playlist, which isn't necessarily what I want to hear. So I can go and pick any other playlist and set that up into a, into a uh, shortcut. And so now I can say, Hey, S lady play piano jazz because I made a shortcut called play piano jazz. 
Mm -hmm. And now it grabs the curated playlist that I actually want to hear and plays that. And now, and now your brain is uh, probably reeling thinking there are so many things I could do with this. I mean, like you could set up like a, you could call it, Hey, S lady play party mix. And you could have several of those curated playlists or your own playlists that you just stack on top of each other in the shortcut. And it'll play through each one for you. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. There are so many shortcuts out there. You know, you know obviously good sources, uh, uh, MacStories.net, they have just, yes. uh, Frederico is just amazing with all this, the shortcut collections. And I'm a, I'm a member of the club Mac Stories. It's worth it uh, to have the, all the resources that he has. And yeah, it's he's great. so passionate about it. Yeah. So they're just, just I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm realizing how many shortcuts I've, that I've put in here that I, oh, I don't I, I, oh, I have that. I didn't know that. I, I forgot I did that. <laughs> you, for, yeah, you forget because there's so many of them. <laughs> same. Well, okay. Well, then here's here's another tip that you need. Did you know you can make folders in shortcuts and then organize your different shortcuts into, into folders? I did not know that. Well, there you go. And, uh, and now it becomes a lot easier to keep track of all the different shortcuts you've made. Um, like one that I had completely forgotten about um, I set one up so that uh, th there's like a group of family members that I will routinely send images to. And, uh, and I have a shortcut for that, but I had forgotten about it. And when I went in and started like reorganizing a bunch of my shortcuts into folders a while ago, mm -hmm. as I'm moving stuff around, I'm like, holy crap, why am I not using this? I made this and I used it a few times and then forgot about it. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a thing. Set up folders. It's much easier to remember all the shortcuts you made that are really super handy. And then you forgot about. And, what, and is that one called set up folders? Um, that one, uh, it's, it's just in the folders section. So if you look in shortcuts, like, mm, okay. like uh, on your iPhone, yep. hold on, let me open up shortcuts on my iPhone and shortcuts. And um, okay. So on the iPhone at the bottom, if you tap in the shortcuts app, you tap my shortcuts mm -hmm. at the top, there's on the left, there's shortcuts with a little uh, Chevron pointing to the left, tap on that. And then that takes you out where you can uh, all, folders. all your shortcuts, add shortcuts to share there sheets you go. Uh, and, or, you know, see the shortcuts you've added to share sheets, mm -hmm. uh, uh, set up your own folders and um, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Yeah, that that's uh, definitely way because that's that's the problem. You just start getting all these shortcuts, it just gets overwhelming. Right. Yeah. And now on the iPad, there's a, a column on the left that uh, that has the the gallery, the automation stuff, the and all the folders. That's awesome. Yeah. There's there's just a ton of shortcuts out there, um, and. Lots of resources. We'll put some links in the show notes here of uh, places you can go. Um, but uh, th those are some of the ones that stand out for you actually that, that you really like. Yeah, just little things that I that I've that I've made over time that become super handy. Um, one that I, I'm going to throw another one at you because it's just really easy to Please. do. Um, so I set up one a while ago as a uh, as an example just to show people. So in shortcuts, I used the, the camera shortcut and, uh, and then told it to, uh, to automatically snap three photos in a row using the front facing camera on my phone. Then mm -hmm. it uses the media uh, shortcut feature and, will, and it will take those three photos that I just snapped and turn those into uh, uh, an animated GIF or GIF, depending on, uh, on how you prefer to say it. Yeah. And, uh, and then it will let me see what it looks like. And then it will automatically drop it into messages for me so I can text it off to someone. And that's it awesome. took me like three minutes to set up and, uh, and that's it. And it, it was just super easy. And so you can do like, like three selfies where you make three faces real fast. Bloop, bop, mm. And then, uh, for the people that are watching live, they're like, holy crap, you just really did that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, 
and then send that animated GIF off to whoever you want. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah, we could do a whole show on shortcuts. I tell you, <laughs> there's just so many. <laughs> we could. Here, okay. Here's the worst. Um, I went through a phase where I kept ordering the same drink at Starbucks, and and at one point my iPhone said, "Do you want me to make that into a shortcut?" So I said, it, it "Yes." You, yeah. And now um, I can say, "Hey, S lady, order Starbucks," and it'll order a a, 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 a London Fog with soy milk. There you go. And it even like knows which Starbucks to order it from. Because well, it's based on where you're located though, right? I think so. Hold on. Let me look at that one real quick. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it, it, um, yeah, it does. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty awesome. No. All right, so we can, we can keep going, but there's just so many other uh, shortcuts out there. Then we'll put so, 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 a couple links in the show notes of those things, but we hope you in, uh, enjoyed that. Um, one other topic I wanted to hit before we uh, close things out here was uh, the notification center. Um, I'm assuming you use that uh, uh, quite a bit and you've got to customize the, the way you like. And I wanted to find out from you, what what are some of the, you know, uh, the settings that you add into the notification center? I mean, I could say mine. But I'd, I'd be curious to know how, how you've set up your notification center because there's so many things you can do in the control center, I should say. Um, not notification, I meant, I meant control center. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I, I know why I wrote, I wrote notification, I meant control. <laughs> uh, but there's so many different things now that they've added for the control center. You know, specifically, I, I always have the magnifier because I think that's just one of the most amazing things and funny that, that Apple always had the magnifier as a, as an accessibility feature and it was buried and you had to go find it. Well, now yeah, which made, is it's, it, it's, it is so dumb. And now it's, it's, it's a mainstream thing here, but um, what are some of the things that you include uh, in your, in your uh, control center that you can bring down and get to very quickly? Um, uh, mine's kind of a uh, plain Jane. Is I it? have okay. uh, uh, I have the Apple TV remote. Yeah, me too. And uh, and I have low power mode right there. Okay. And uh, and then of course the camera, and uh, screen recording, magnifier, flashlight, and I put the hearing in there. Okay. Because because sometimes that one's just really fun to play with, um, and. Uh, so then, of course, I have HomeKit showing um, some specific yeah, devices in here as well, and I have a uh, uh, a couple uh, uh, scenes that are buttons in here. Okay. So, like, uh, uh, I have one uh, scene that's that's uh, I'm working, and so. That one sets all the lights correctly in my office here for when I'm working and not actually uh, uh, recording mm. a show. Okay. And so that's just a button in here as well, because sometimes I want to make that scene happen, but mm -hmm. I don't actually want to speak. Interesting. So I can just slide down control center and tap that button. Interesting. Yeah, that, that, that is pretty awesome. That you can you can do that. Um, the other you know, one I add add in here that I think is a quick way to get to, and I, I always keep forgetting because I go search for it, is the uh, the the code scanner. You know, that's the app that you can't that that is not as an app. You have to search for it. So I if you used to have that in here, yeah, but I took it out because the camera just automatically recognizes QR codes now. Yeah, I thought the code scanner seems a little faster to me. Um, it probably I, is. When I go in there, so I do you tap it and you do the QR code because I was in a uh, Microsoft training class this past week and they were putting up QR codes all the time. So I'm going up to my screen and, oh, yeah, let me scan that. Um, and it does bring it into a, a page and it, and it gets you where you need to go. Um, but, yeah, I agree with you. The camera does uh, does do it, too. It, sometimes it's a little tricky to get the camera to, to, to scan it just right. But, um, yeah. Um, but I think that's a that's a pretty good uh, pretty good good one too. And uh, you know, the, I still uh, I have one spot empty on my uh, control center. I could just put yeah. that back in. Oh, look, yeah, I think I have one left too. Is I've got 
the one I got like f- uh, five of the home stuff. Uh, yeah, I got to revamp my home. My home is such a mess right now. Some of the some of the outlets are just are dropped off when I had a uh, update my uh, router so i've just been lazy i haven't gone and <laughs> re-enabled them so got lights plugged in those in, into those uh plugs and they're they're not working so i gotta get those uh get them up and running again this is the way you just the lights you just don't need all the time right that that's why i've been able to get away with it so <laughs> so uh but uh, as anybody doesn't know we went the way to get into the control center uh to make the changes or what you want to add uh, you just go into settings and then you scroll down and go into control center. Uh, and then the first list is going to be your included controls and you can tap the minus uh, uh, icon and remove those. And you can also reorder them too. So if you want them to be you know, like, I have the flashlight at the top because that's always the thing you always use quite a bit. Um, and then they've created quite a much larger size, uh, a larger list of controls. And we've talked about this many times, but it's always worth uh, re- revisiting here. Um, you know, like the text size, I think that's kind of a cool thing. If you want to make text yeah. bigger, if it's, if you're having trouble seeing it, you can do that. Of course they got now the built-in rec- music recognition as since Shazam is now built into, um, into, I into should. the IO, into iOS now. So you can, you know, it, it really works because you just tap it whenever you, you just go, Control center, tap music recognition while it's playing, and and it, and it comes up pretty quickly. See, a lot of these things, I think, oh, I should put that in. Oh, wait, I just say, hey, S lady, do yeah. whatever the thing is. Like, hey, S lady, what song is this? Right. Yeah. Um, so, um, so there are some things in here. Others are probably not as important. Uh, notes, I don't know if I needed that quick of an access to, to notes. I can just have the notes app at, at my fingertips to go into notes because I'm a pretty heavy notes user. Um, and um, the stopwatch, if it's not something you do use a lot. Wallet, eh, I think it's easy to just get to the wallet app, but just have it on your that the, the first page of your home screen. And, uh, right. And that's how I've done it. And, and you, and you, uh, when you gave me that suggestion about the widgets having the battery, the battery widget that I have it on the home uh, screen now, that uh, I think that's uh, that's mm-hmm. a good place to to do that. So, but uh, yeah, the control centers, it, it, it's it's very powerful. And I don't, I think there's a lot of it's a lot of things you don't you don't uh, uh, see people do. I go in here for when I, I tap in for screen mirroring if I want to I want to mirror my uh, mirror my uh, device. Uh, uh, which would have came in handy today if I would have had a device that I could have mirrored to when I was doing a training class, but no, I forget my cord. Um, but mm-hmm. um, that that's there um, as well as you have the uh, the lock button. So if you want to do the portrait orientation locks, where where it doesn't doesn't uh, spin, you want to keep it locked. That that's there. Do not disturb is in there. But of course, a lot of this stuff's going to change a little bit once iOS 15 comes out. So we'll definitely be covering that and talking about it. even even the um, uh, the the, uh, the voice memo app is in here too. You can tap and uh, it 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 gives you a quick button to get to the voice memos. Um, if you want to, rec- uh, if, if those of you who like to record quick voice memo- memos in the voice memos app. Um, that's there too. So let's say you don't go in here often enough to think about it. Cause like I could, see, I could see you're like, wow, I don't remember all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. There's some really cool stuff in here. And uh, uh, even and the I, sound recognition, there's a sound recognition um, one that you can do in there. And then what that is, is uh, it, you know, when you tap it, um, you can uh, tap the sound recognition of like, if, it, if you hear a siren smoke alarm or a cat or a dog it's uh it it it, it goes in and, and you can turn on sound recognition and uh, it'll listen for those certain items and notify you when those sounds have been recognized so if, if it's something you know like a, a car a, like a, a siren as such it, it, it'll, it'll kind of notify you um i believe tell you if it uh if it hears running water yeah 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 water running yep and baby crying shouting coughing yeah that's all in there too so it's a problem when you're watching tv yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. The uh, can can be a problem here. So, but uh, yeah, that, I I think it's something to to always be aware of, and uh, we'll always try to keep covering that for you. And uh, 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 I think it's good stuff. Did you have anything else that relates to that, or you want to uh, talk about before we wrap things up here? Um, I, I will say that as we've been talking, I I took the hearing thing out because uh, of Control Center because I realized. I haven't actually tapped on that in like a year. Yeah, I, I actually did take it out. I don't, I don't use it. So I, so I put the calculator in there, even though uh, I have the calculator in the widget screen. You know, when you're on the yeah. main home screen, you swipe left or right. Right. So I pop that in there 
and I still have one empty spot and I'm looking at all this other stuff and I'm like, the, the other stuff, I do it with, uh, with Yes Lady or uh, right. I use different apps or it's something that's already on my home screen. So I guess I'm just going to have to live with one empty space on, yeah. uh, on Control Center. It's okay. So you're, unless you're OCD and you want to have something in that spot. I, I, I'm not really OCD, <laughs> but I just keep looking at that spot thinking, wasted space. Why? 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 So, all right. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and wrap things up for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the, that was a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. You can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others. But better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And uh, Jeff, thanks for being here as always. Uh, tell us where everybody can find you. Uh, well, first, thanks for having me back on. It, it's always a lot of fun. It always um, is. It, it, it is. It, even when Warren's not here, it's not the same, but it's still fun. Yeah. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Jay Gamut. Both places on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jay um, the the Mac show and the big show on British Tech Network. So that's Thursdays and Fridays. Uh, Mac Voice is live on Tuesdays. And um, and like this week, I, I was on Apple Context Machine. I uh, here on a, on a semi regular basis. So thank you for that. I get around. Yeah. Google me. You yes. can find me. Yes, we can. We can find you, and and we love your YouTube videos. Yeah, and you said you got oh, some. You. you got some in the can coming pretty soon here. So yes, right? yes, I do. Yeah, so we'll look forward to those as well. Well, thanks everybody for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show and uh, we'll talk again soon. All right, a couple minutes extra. It's okay. Yeah, it was fun. Absolutely. And uh, we will say goodbye to the live stream. See everybody. <laughs>